And then you just see them make subtle bad decision after subtle bad decision. Like when they first get there and they decide without meeting anybody or seeing the camp at all to just drop shrooms. <laughs> and, and you're just like, that's, you, you settle in. You yeah. know, settle in. They're, all, you know, they're already making decisions that are impulsive. And they're in a, a foreign land with people that they don't understand. And it's just, it, it, it gives you anxiety watching it. And then you have to watch it unfold in this kind of in these actions that you knew were inevitable, you know? Oh yeah. So it's, it's, it is weird to, to place yourself in this playground in which, you know, everyone's going to come out well, yeah, bad. Well, yeah. And, and, and yet and, you're, and that's, and that's the, like you're he, sitting there waiting for it. And it's just fascinating. Cause like, that's the way he constructs the movie. He does that right. intentionally. Like his whole yeah. thing that a lot of people sometimes also critique him for is that he has a very like formal way of filming. Like, um, hmm. you know, people will, people who, praise him a little too highly will compare him to Kubrick in the sense that he places like symmetrical shots and, you know, very ostentatious okay. camera moves and stuff like that. But because he's same with hereditary, how they had like kind of like a little dollhouse that he like very minutely orchestrates. Yeah. He seems like he crafts his movies that way. Um, for sure. I mean, at one point they even have a line in here where they're, it's like, it's like theater. They say, you know, like I, I feel yep. like he's just, he's very, aware and he invites the audience to be very aware of like the choices that he's making of actually filmmaking and the construction of shots and the way the mm -hmm. thing, you know, the way he guides you through scenes. Um, and then obviously he's making overt references to movies that we know end horribly. I mean, this is a direct, yeah, the Wicker a de Man. direct riff on the Wicker Man with one of the most famously brutal endings of all time. Yeah. And you know, you're getting there <laughs> and he gives a big old tip of the hat to that one. Yeah. And I do love that he <laughs> still finds a way to subvert it. In the sense that yeah. he has your point of view align, in my opinion, with the people who do the burning, yes. which is the re a direct reverse of The Wicker Man, which is, I mean, for people should probably have seen The Wicker Man, you should watch The Wicker Man soon because yes. you might be having a, uh, <laughs> an episode, uh, an episode on, on such, a, <laughs> such a topic. Um, but yeah, like a huge part of, of that is that it's an outsider comes into this, you know, this small rural town and he's kind of weirded out and uh, he's, he's, he's a little bit kind of like prudish um, mm. and it ends up being that that town is pretty fucked up and they are going <laughs> to make him a sacrificial sacrifice. lamb. And something very similar happens here in Midsummer, where, you know, a lot of the people are made into sacrificial lambs for this for This, this one cult. It feels as if, though, that the people have... Now, don't get me wrong. They did choose these people preemptively. Yeah. But as the the rituals go, it seems as if they start to pick and choose people based on more their actions. It's like mm -hmm. they brought them all here, but then they start choosing, like, like for instance, the boyfriend, who is obviously the biggest piece of shit in the entire group. Uh, yeah. It seems as if they push him towards uh, mating with, with the woman. Yes. So that things can kind of unravel and so that they can get the, the May Queen or the girlfriend that arrives with him to get to another position that, that they want her to be yeah, in. Yeah, it feels like the cult has more of an active participating role in shaping the way that this yes. all kind of ends up working. It doesn't working. feel like they just naturally find themselves there. It feels like the cult is kind of manipulating. Kind well, of, yeah, because I, I think it know. is an interesting idea of um, Danny, who's the main character, played by Florence Pugh, who's amazing in the mm -hmm. film. Um, you know, she starts the yeah, film with a, with a hugely heavy loss and also she's, you know, in a relationship that she is Can very just uncertain briefly, about. Uh, Ari just loves his, uh, grief stricken women weeping. huddled over a, over a man and just yelling and well, screaming yeah. Well, yeah. and weeping. And, 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 and a montage of, of weeping. Cause yes. in, in hereditary, it's like, oh, yeah, it's right. like four or five connected shots where she's weeping in different rooms. Yes. And, and for me. I mean, you obviously, you, it's not laugh out loud funny, but like it's a joke. And yeah. it's like that's that's what he's doing. And I think a lot of people he's under really trying to over yeah. go over the top. Yeah, I it. think a lot of people underrated that about Hereditary, because I mean, we kind of talked about it a little bit that I thought that film was just like really brutally cruel and to the point of being like almost like a Coen Brothers esque farce. Yeah. You know, like when you're watching like, you know, some of them are nice characters, some of them are bad characters, but most of them are kind of just like kind of idiots in yeah. a Coen Brothers film. Yeah. And you watch them just make mistakes that go horribly wrong and you kind of just wait for it to happen. And it's funny. <laughs> yeah, but it's exactly. still kind of like that was pretty brutal you know like yeah. no one gets to the end of fargo and is like ha, -ha. <laughs> like right <laughs> um so i feel like 
he's doing that, but just with like a, a really dread inducing, like sustained tone. Mm-hmm. But it's the same idea where I can almost feel like he's being like, I'm a bad boy or what, like I'm doing some really gross stuff. Yeah. Um, and I feel like in another context, I would find that annoying, but I just find his commitment to it and the way that he captures it in the way that he sustains it so well to the fact that some people don't even notice, yeah. I think is really impressive. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this one, I think a lot more people are noticing. I think a lot more people are saying that Midsummer is intentionally funny, even though I thought Hereditary was intentionally funny. But this one, I think is just more obvious. It ha- has more and like it's jokes. It's just more natural for you to laugh because when you're going through these it's rituals bizarre. that you've yeah. obviously never seen before. I mean, the, wi- the, the Wicker Man bizarre. is pretty funny too. Yeah. Oh so. yeah, you're right. There's plenty of moments where where you're just kind of, and, it's, and it's the it's, type it's of funny that's just, thing, right? so. it, it's a, it's a weirdness. Yeah. It's something that you're, it's strange. It's something that you're not used to. Yeah. So you're just kind of uncomfortably laughing along. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of that. Even when.